The last two videos are looking at net present value, that is using cash flow diagrams to reduce a stream of future payments to a single value that we can compare at the present time. The cash flow diagram that we've been looking at is this simple one in which a single payment at time zero entitles us to a constant stream of recurring payments, each one of these equal to a value A. We had a formula for computing the equivalence of A in present value terms, and it looked like this. R is the discount rate, N is the number of compounding periods, And when we look at all of this together, it's called the discount factor. So in here, R is the discount rate. In our diagram, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the number of compounding periods, N. But when we compute everything within the brackets, that's called the discount factor. And for positive discount rates, of course, the discount factor is going to be a number less than 1. Let's take a look at our classic exponential discounting factor begins at 1, at time equals 0, of course, there is no discounting because that's the present value. And then going out into the future, it monotonically declines from 1 and absent 0. The formula we've been using is this classic exponential decay formula, e to the negative rt, which is the same as 1 over e to the rt, and now you can see why at time equal infinity, the discount factor is going to be zero. But in this version of the formula, we reach a certain complication with a special kind of uh, bond, or a special kind of cash flow diagram that extends out for perpetuity. In this case, perpetuity, perpetuity means to infinity. Now that might seem crazy, but in the 18th century, sure enough, the British government issued bonds that were perpetual. A, uh, a, an investor in 1751 would make a certain payment that would entitle them to an infinite stream of regular and constant payments. So not only they would collect, but their heirs, grandchildren, great-grandchildren would collect on this forever, and the British government is still paying on these bonds now. So. We have to imagine a cash flow diagram that contains an infinite number of these payments. And if we do that, then we plug in infinity for n. And sure enough, for any r other than 0, we would get 1 plus oh, 0 0.01 to the infinity. We'd get a classic infinity over infinity problem. Oops. Uh, let's say we're taking 0 0.01 for the interest rate. We multiply that by infinity. Now we can see our infinity over infinity problem. So this expression of the discount factor blows up when n equals infinity. It becomes indeterminate. So now the question is, when we do have this perpetual bond situation, how do we resolve how much we should pay? It should seem clear that if r equals 0 and there's no discounting, then the net present value of this infinite series of payments equal to A is going to be the amount of each payment, A, times the number of payments, which is infinite. And so the present value here would be infinity. In other words, if you're going to promise me a constant stream of money for forever, for perpetuity, and I wasn't going to discount these future payments, then that would be worth to me right now an infinite stream. That's not the way it works because we know that we do discount in finance future payments. And so each one of these that happens at some future time, in order to reduce that to present value, it has to be multiplied by the discount factor, which corresponds to this point in time. This payment times this discount factor, this payment times this discount factor, and so on and so on, so that each payment is worth precedingly, less and less and less and less. The question we need to answer is, how do we multiply all of these payments 
by all of these times, seeing as it's infinite, we can't get our calculator out and keep working this and working this. We know that this asymptotically approaches zero, and so the net present value of these payments must asymptotically approach zero because P equals A times whatever the correct expression of the discount factor is. Well, here's our expression of the discount factor. So we have P equals A times e to the negative rt. And this holds for any single one of these payments. But if we want to add them all up in a single expression, then we can use calculus. We're going to integrate this function, the discount factor function, from 0 to infinity, multiply that by a, and thus in one expression we should be able to calculate p the uh, equivalent present value. So let's look at this integral. Turns out it's fairly straightforward. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. So when we integrate e to the negative rt, we get something that looks like this. 1 over negative r e to the negative rt. And of course we have to evaluate that from 0 to infinity. And you can check this by taking the derivative here and you'll get this expression. It's the evaluation where the problem becomes much more simple. But first we have to plug in infinity and we'll get a 1 over negative r e to the negative infinity because e to the negative r times infinity, well that's just going to be equal to zero. Now we have to subtract the same expression evaluated at t equals zero. That's going to be 1 over negative r e to the negative r times 0, which is just 0. You know, e to the 0 is just 1. So that simplifies as well. Now we have negative 1 over negative r. That is to say, p, the present value of this infinite stream of payments when discounted using the exponential discount formula, equals a divided by r. 